Hey, what's up people? Welcome back. Hopefully you guys are doing well. Um, today we are bringing it back to some more cinematography stuff. First off, let me just kind of give you a little rundown. You might see some of these little patches here and there throughout the video. Um, my apartment is getting ripped up. I am actually moving out. Me and my girlfriend are moving somewhere else. Uh, so we are currently in the midst of moving, so we're patching up some holes. Um, and yeah, it's kind of a mess in here. Besides that, we are ready to talk about some cinematography. And this is a topic I've talked about a couple times, but I feel like I want to talk about it again, but maybe on a slightly smaller scale. How to shoot a two camera interview. And forewarning, I don't have two tripods on me and I also needed to use one camera to shoot the behind the scenes while I was filming the interview with the other. So it's not gonna be your traditional two cameras right next to each other, which would be normal. So without further ado, let's talk about the camera aspect. So the A camera is my Ursa Mini Pro G2, B cam is the Pocket 6K Pro, both of which are set to 5600 Kelvin, which is daylight. The A cam I set to 1.7, which is the fastest aperture on the Sigma 1835. On the B cam, which is the pocket, I set to 2.8, which is the fastest for the 24 to 70 Sigma lens. So the first thing you really want to do is just figure out your composition, figure out your space. Most of the time when I'm in a room and I just walk in, I always try to find the corners or the L's of the room. The reason why you want to find the L of the room because it adds two walls. It, th it makes things a bit more three dimensional. And not saying I don't shoot across flat walls because I do a lot actually in interviews. It's kind of a style that I like. But today we're just going to be talking about really kind of just, you know, basic interview stuff with two cameras. And if you're just in a random room in a random scenario, these tips will help you be able to accomplish any interview setup in any room. So tip number one is to look for the L of the room and place your subject near the corner of the room. Now, I don't place my subject subject directly in the vertical line because for me, that's kind of distracting just having a vertical line come through the person's head, which brings me to tip number two. Try to place your subject as far away from the wall as possible. And the reason for doing this is because since your aperture is at a 1.7, 2.8, most of the time you're gonna be pretty shallow. So you wanna separate your subject from the background as best as possible. Now, having your subject as far away from the wall means that your focus is set on the subject, which means that your fall off to the wall will be much greater, which means it'll be more blurred. So that is a really big benefit, especially if you're shooting in a location where you don't really want to see any of the details of the background. You just kind of want to get a general view. It's really great to separate your subject that way and use the fast f-stop, the 1.7, 2.8, to really emphasize the separation between the subject and the background. Tip number three is framing. Something that I find that I do pretty often when I'm doing these types of projects, whether it's corporate, business, law firm, whatever it is you're doing these type of interview setups, most of the time the client is going to want you to frame in the left or right third. And sometimes you could frame dead center. It's definitely becoming more of a, um, a style now, definitely given Netflix not documentaries coming out, a lot of things have been framed dead center. Or if you're doing direct to camera, you're doing a teleprompter, most of the time you're gonna to wanna to be dead center. So the reason why I positioned her on the left third of the frame is because if you look at the image, you'll notice that there are windows on the right hand side. And looking at this frame right here with all of the lights turned off, and just using natural light, you'll see that the motivating light is already coming from the window. And that is a great indicator for me on how I need to start lighting the subject and how this framing should look. And that is a great tip is whenever you are in a certain scenario and you're in a location you've never been in before, find the L of the room, but also find where the motivating lights are. Where are the windows? How can you utilize the windows to emphasize your key light? Now, that also is dependent on how strong your key light is. If you don't really have that big of a source or a strong source and you're shooting towards the window, most of the time you're not gonna really be able to get the detail you want in the window because of the output of your key light. So keep that in mind if you don't have the most powerful lights. But not saying you can't shoot towards the window, you could still use it as a motivating source, but maybe just frame out the window a little bit just so you don't have that blown out image. And another tip is your brightest 
point in the frame should be your subject. And if it is your windows, which a lot of times it can be because it's hard to contain the exposure out there, it can be slightly distracting if your hottest point is the window. So make sure you're just being conscious about that in terms of shooting towards a window, making sure you have enough uh, output in your key light to match the outside exposure and use the window or any sort of lamp as a motivating source to then bring in your key light. All right, going on to the B cam here. I use the Pocket 6K Pro, again with the 24 to 70. Something that I typically like to do with my B cam is set it a little bit higher than my A cam, so it's on a slightly more down angle. I find that it is slightly more intimate that way instead of looking upwards on a B angle. The A cam, I have no problem kind of looking up or being a little bit more level, but the B cam, I like to have a little bit higher up with a slight tilt down. And I find that to be slightly more intimate and I find that to be uh, a more flattering angle, especially when you're at a tighter lens. So speaking of lenses, my A cam typically has the wider lens on it so you can see more of the location. The B cam, I typically have a tighter lens on it because you don't really want to show too much of the location on the B cam. You can, given the you know creative, but most of the time I have a very tight lens on my B cam mostly a 24-70, 70-200, whatever lens that I have access to. But for this one in particular, I had the 24-70, to 70, and I believe I set it to 50 millimeters. And this is what the B cam looks like compared to the A cam. Now, as you can see, with the 50 millimeter, it starts to introduce a lot of compression in the background. It starts to bring the background closer to the subject, which is really awesome because with the shallow depth of field, you really can get a nice blur and a really nice focus on your subject. And another tip is when placing both of your cameras, you want your B cam to be opposite of the key light. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about this when we dive into lighting, but it's really important that your B cam is shooting far side and shooting into the shadow side to get the most depth, to get the most visually appealing image. So this is a great segue into the lighting segment. So throughout me talking, I'm going to be showing different clips of using all of the lights that I have set up turned on then one light turned off, another light turned off, the key light turned off, and I'm just gonna go straight natural. And you're gonna really be able to see the difference between what each of these lights are doing and what the benefits are. So starting with the main key light here, this is usually one of the first lights that I set up to be able to establish a base look and be able to see what I need to add in the background afterwards. Because if you can't establish a key light, then there's no really, you know, it's not gonna be a great interview setup because you're, you're the main point of the interview is the subject, so you need to light the subject well. So for the key light, I'm using the Intellitech Mega Light Cloth. I have that set to 70% at 5600 Kelvin. I also have the grid on, and something I like to do, I always really keep the grid on because it is a, uh, it's a great benefit in keeping light controlled instead of spilling everywhere. It keeps it more directional, even though it is a very soft source, it does keep it slightly directional and can keep off of back walls if you are closer to a wall. So I recommend if you have a grid or if you have any sort of flags or anything, try to block off some of the key light on the background and make it just more directional on the talent. It'll make everything look a lot more crisp and a lot more fine-tuned and purposeful. The next light I'm going to touch on is the Falconized Bicolored Light Mat. I think it's a 2 by one And this is a bicolored light I set to 5600 Kelvin as well at 35% intensity. This light I'm using as a little bit of a hair light. And normally I would like to use a tube, but I actually have a tube out on a rental right now. So the only light I have available that would fit this type of, you know, thing I'm going for is the Falconized Light Mat. And again, I have a grid on it as well to keep it controlled and not spill across my face or the talent's face and spill across anywhere else. It's just kind of, you know, hugging right over here just to give a little bit of an edge and give a little bit of separation in the background because considering this is far side, there's no light really coming from here. So I want to separate her hair since it's darker from the background and just add a little bit of touch and a little bit of sparkle. Next light I'm going to touch on is the background light which is the Forza 500. I have that with the cone attachment at 100% bouncing off of the ceiling. Now, the reason why I added this Forza 500 is because without it, as you can see here, it is exceptionally dark in the background. The key light can only do so much, the windows can only do so much. So adding this background really brings up the intensity in the background and makes the levels look more even in the foreground, midground, and background. So it looks a lot more realistic. Now. Again, this is a creative touch, not saying you can't use it or you have to use it. If you're going for a way more of a darker 
uh, you know, mood, a darker interview, you might not need any more background light or you might just tone it down to maybe 10% or 5%. Again, adjust things accordingly based on the creative, but know that just lighting the subject and the key light and with an edge, that's not enough sometimes. You need to look at your space behind you. What can you do to bring up the levels in the background? How can you shape some more light in the background? These are all really important aspects to really leveling up your interview setup game and taking you to the next level. Bigger interview setups, you get into more higher quality documentaries. It is expected of you to light the entire scene, the entire location. And that is not just the talent, that is the entire background, that is the hallways, that is the little window, that is the... Everything that you see in the frame needs to be lit or not lit, but it needs to be purposeful. So keep that in mind when you are doing your next interview setup. Take a look at the frame and see what else needs to be added or subtracted. And my goal for this entire video is for you guys to walk away with just intention. Interview setups are very easy but they can be difficult if you don't do them enough. For me, I do interviews all the time, so I can light an interview in five to 10 minutes, no matter what the room is, no matter what the size is, but it's repetition, it's intention, it's also knowing how a specific image is supposed to look. So last thing I'm gonna talk about is if you are a one-man band setup, you're doing the interview yourself, or if you are having a interviewer, which is usually the director or producer, and if they haven't done one before, it would be my advice for you guys to let them know that the interviewer should always sit in between the ACAM and the key light. And the reason is, is because when you are the person getting interviewed and you're looking at the interviewer, you want to face towards the key light, which means your ACAM is shooting slightly far sided instead of looking towards B cam and you're shooting near sided. Now, even though I'm dead center right now, even if I turn my head, you could still slightly see there's more shadow here and more fill here. Now, if I turn towards the far side, towards B cam, it's all fill and no shadow over here. So my advice to you is make sure that the interviewer is sitting between the A cam and key light, also at a height that is relative to the lens of the A cam. You don't want them sitting too high or too low. You want them kind of in the middle, somewhere around the lens, just so when the interviewer is asking the questions and the talent is talking back, it is kind of in a direct eye line to the lens and it is not somewhere too obscure. So that's all I got for you guys today. Please hit the subscribe button, like button, comment. Let me know what you guys think. I'd love to hear from you. Hopefully you found a couple little quick tips in this one. This is a very easy video. This is something that, you know, a lot of you guys are going to be doing as you are pursuing your cinematography career. You're going to be doing a lot of documentary, a lot of interviews, a lot of corporate stuff. So being able to master the interview setup is crucial to being able to continue getting hired, keep getting better and working on your craft. So that's it for today. I appreciate you guys as always. Have a great day. Peace out.